Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about the difference between DynamoDB's GetItem and Query API. These two APIs may look pretty similar at face value, but they're usable in totally different circumstances. And I just wanted to make a video to talk about the difference between these two and when it makes sense to use one over the other. So let's start by talking about the GetItem API and talk about when it's applicable. So the get item API is used when you want to retrieve a single item by the partition key or optionally sort key if that's the structure that you have with your DynamoDB table. So let's take a look at this example here, this customer orders table that I've created. You can tell that this table does not have a sort key and an easy way to do that is by looking at the values for the customer ID here. Each of these values is unique for every row. If our table had a sort key, then we would be able to have multiple duplicate records with items such as C1 as the customer ID. So when using the get item API in a table like this one, we would need to provide the partition key of the item that we're looking for. So C1, for example. And this would return the entire row contents here. So everything that you see in this row. However, if you wanted to get all three of these different items in one shot, you're not able to do that using the get item API. Instead, you would need to use the batch get item API. Now the batch get item API allows you to retrieve up to 100 items or 16 megabytes worth of data in a single API call. And the way it works is that you need to provide the partition key of each item that you're looking for. So for example, in this table, if you want to retrieve all three of these rows here, you would need to provide three different key values, C-1, C-2, and C-3. And provided this does not exceed 16 megabytes worth of data, which it does not in this case, then you'd be able to retrieve all those items at once. So that's the general idea of the get item API. But there are a couple caveats of this API call, and that is that you cannot use the get item API on a global secondary index or GSI for short. And if you've never heard about GSIs or you don't know a lot about them, in summary, GSIs are indexes that you can assign to attributes on your table and allow you to do lookups on those attributes. So for example, if we're interested in all orders with this particular date, because order date is our GSI here, we can find all those orders very quickly. However, you're not allowed to use get item or batch get item on the GSI. And the reason that is, is because DynamoDB does not enforce uniqueness on GSI attributes. So it makes it possible that we can have duplicate records with the same key here. So 2022-09-28. Whereas in this example on our partition key, we cannot have multiple records with C1. We can if we had a sort key, but not if we just have a normal partition key. So that's one thing to keep in mind when using the get item API, you cannot use it on your global secondary indexes. For that, you'll need to use the query operation, which is what I wanna talk about next. So let's go over to the query section here, and I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit so you can see. So the query operation is different from the get item operation because it allows you to retrieve a list of items sharing the same partition key, sharing the same partition key. So let's look again at another example. This one is very similar to what we were just looking at. So we have you know, the customer ID, the order ID, and the order date. One thing that I did change is that I made the order ID equal to the sort key. And what that allows us to do is that it allows us to have duplicate records with the same customer ID here. A reminder, when you're using a sort key, the combination of the partition key and the sort key uniquely identifies a record. So the combination of C1 and O1 is unique. C1 and O2 is also unique. And for the third one here, C2 and O3 are also unique. So these two things in combination when using a partition key and sort key must be unique. Now, because of that, we can overload this table to have multiple records with the same customer ID. And this makes sense, right? If you're a customer, you may place many, many different orders. So C1 may place order one, C1 may place order two. You can place as many orders as you want and reasonably they'd probably be on different dates. So with the query operation, what we're allowed to do now is provide C1 as the partition key. And what that will do is return both of these two records here, both of these two rows, the first and the second. 
Additionally, you're also able to use the query operation on a global secondary index. So say for example, you're looking for all orders that share the same date, you would do a query operation on the order date global secondary index, provide the date that you're looking for. And for example, if you provided this date here, so 2022-09-30, that date is also shared by this row here. So if you were to query on 2022-09-30, you'd get these bottom two rows here. So that kind of shows you how the query operation works. Now we can also use the get item operation on this table as well. However, since this table is using a sort key, we'll need to provide the customer ID and the order ID of the record that we're looking for. So say we're looking for the first record in our table, you would need to provide the get item API with C1 as the customer ID and O1 as the order ID. This will return the first record in our table. Now, another thing that I wanted to point out is that the query operation supports equal to, less than, greater than, less than equal to, and greater than or equal to operations, also between or begins on the sort key value. So say you provided C1 for your partition key, you can say, give me all the records that have a C1 as the customer ID, but with an order ID greater than O2, for example or greater than or equal to O2. That would return only this second record here. So you can do some very powerful operations when using these kind of, I call them range-like operations, and they're very, very powerful to let you filter down your results without having to use a filter expression. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that a single call can return up to one megabyte worth of data. And if the number of records that you have that share that same partition key exceed one megabytes worth of data, you can use pagination. And that'll allow you to retrieve all records sequentially. So you'll say, give me all the records with C1. It'll return to you one megabyte worth of records. That could be two or more or three or four, however many records it may be. And if there's more data that hasn't been returned yet, you can provide a key to your next API call and that key will indicate the next batch of results to return to you. So that's the idea with the query operation. So, so far in summary, the get item in the query, get item allows you to retrieve items provided you know the partition key and batch get item allows you to retrieve more than one in one shot. And the query operation allows you to retrieve items that share the same partition key. So you can get more than one in that case. And it also lets you access records on the global secondary index. So I realized this may have been a lot to explain. So I wanted to make it a little bit more simple for you in terms of when you should use one or the other. And it boils down to these four items here. So if you're looking for a single item on a main table index, you'll want to use get item. And if you're looking for multiple items that have a different partition key, you want to use batch get item. Keep in mind that if your table has a sort key, the partition key can be the same, but the sort key will be different. And if you're looking for multiple items that share the same partition key, that's when it makes sense to use query. And if you're looking for one or more items on a GSI, you'll also want to use query. I hope this video helped clearing up the difference between get item and query. Thanks so much, and I'll see you next time.